Triple H has finally gone and done it. He has announced we're going to have a WWE draft in the year of 2023, which you know what that means here on this channel. It's going to get draft heavy with videos. Today, I'm going to look at people that perhaps don't need the draft, if we're being honest. I think they've been booked pretty well where they are. They could actually stay on the shows they are. 10 superstars who do not need to move in the WWE draft. I'm going to start off by talking about superstars from Monday Night Raw, and then we're going to finish the video with superstars from SmackDown. So let's kick things off and let's talk about none other than the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. When Cody Rhodes returned to WWE, he has felt like a big deal. Very important, won big matches, made himself a WrestleMania main event. And in fact, even when he was injured for what, seven, eight months in his away from TV, Raw felt like it was missing a big star, missing that main event guy. And when Cody returned to win the Royal Rumble and come on Monday Night Raw each and every week after, Raw was then finally getting that spark. It felt like he'd been missing. That top guy, the talker, the, the face of the show, the face of that product. Cody Rhodes, for me, belongs on Monday Night Raw. Yes, you could move and make that over on Friday Night Smackdown, but if you have, say, for example, a Roman Reigns, a Bloodline on Smackdown, then you've got everyone under one roof again. For me, Cody has felt like a natural fit for Monday nights and for Raw. A longer show as well, more that you can work with, suited for longer matches, suited for longer promos, suited for Cody Rhodes. So for me, I would keep him exactly where he is. Cody Rhodes needs to stay on Monday Night Raw. Another one of Raw's top guys for you next now, Seth Frickin' Rollins. He's just always felt like a Raw guy to me. I'm gonna say it straight off the bat. Since 2016, he's done most of his time on Raw, most of his best work. He was on SmackDown for a brief spell, had good feuds over there with Edge, but I just felt like that lack of an extra hour. Seth Rollins is a guy that's used to having long TV matches, having long segments, building long programs and storylines. For me, I'd like to see him remain and shine on Monday Night Raw. He's a guy that sort of flirted with the mid card with Austin Fury and Bobby Lashley in the last 12 months. He's been someone that's been at the top of the mountain in the main event. Either way, Seth Rollins always flourishes when he's on Raw. And depending on the people you can bring over from SmackDown, let's say, for example, a Gunter, a Drew McIntyre. You can actually really put some new, exciting programs there for Seth to work with. He doesn't necessarily need to be the one to move. You can move a couple of top stars over to come and work with him. And of course, like I can say, it feels like a natural playground for Seth to do his best work. Bring those other great superstars over and let's see some great stuff coming on Raw for the rest of 2023. Next, let's talk about the man, Becky Lynch. We've got to keep the couples together, haven't you? Seth stays on Raw, so does Becky. But Becky is a general. She's a locker room leader. And to be honest, when you look at the recent stuff that's been going on with Becky Lynch in WWE, She's been feeling a lot with damage control. And for me, if you look at both of them, damage control feel like they are the ones that need the fresh start and not her. So for me, that's the reason why I would keep her on Raw and perhaps say move damage control over the SmackDown. And I wouldn't say then it would be a good idea to move Becky over with them. Of course, if you move a couple of people over from SmackDown to Raw, so I don't know, a Ronda Rousey, for example, Raquel Rodriguez, a Liv Morgan, she's got some fresh feuds to work with and with her current storyline direction of just losing the women's tag team championships and of course with the heel turn by Trish Stratus there's plenty going on for Becky Lynch right now on Raw anyway so for me personally I would keep Becky Lynch exactly where she is on Monday Night Raw. Now I'm not sure if he'll be featured in the draft because he's currently on the shelf injured but Randy Orton for me needs to remain on Raw. Uh, one of my main reasons for this is because I want to see a program with him and Cody. We've seen Cody's legacy with his family with Dusty Rose obviously still needs to finish the story with Roman Reigns at some point down the line. Cody's current direction of course is Brock Lesnar but should Randy Orton return they were involved in a group called Legacy back in the noughties of course towards the late noughties where Randy Orton was the top guy of that group uh, and Cody Rose was just an up-and-comer doing the dirty work for Randy at the time. I'd like to see them sort of revisit the story now you know, obviously like 10, 15 years onwards now, you know, seeing the involvement of Cody Rhodes and of course seeing Randy Orton doing what he does best, going back as a heel, sort of turning on Cody, sort of trying to put him back down the card. I think that could be a fun program to watch on WWE TV. Of course, when Randy first initially will return, of course, he'll get that big buzz, that big pop. But of course, you know, in Randy fashion, he can make a heel turn like no other. For me, Randy Orton would be great to stay on the Raw brand. And I just think there is some natural feuds you can do with Randy on Raw. It's been many years if he was to be a heel again. You know, we mentioned Seth Rollins earlier on as well. I'd like to see that sort of program again. If people come over from Friday Night Smackdown to Raw as well. And certainly there's some fresh programs for Randy to go in as well. So for me, Randy for me should be staying on Raw. Now I'm going a little bit left field for my last pick now. I'm going with the Alpha Academy. I just really enjoy their work and I think that they will probably suffer 
with lack of TV time if they move over to SmackDown. Now, there are rumours that the Alpha Academy could break up anyway. Otis or Otis has been rumoured to be going over to the Maximum Male Models. That could lead Chad Gable to be a solo star. Either way, whether they're a team or individuals, I think they get more of a chance to shine on Monday Night Raw. I've enjoyed the work they've done since they've gone over there. They were, of course, former Raw Tag Team Champions at one point as well. They've gotten the last two WrestleManias. Will that happen for them if they go over to SmackDown? I'm not so sure. Look, they're both incredibly talented, but with that one less hour of TV time, and of course, depending on the influx of stars that could go over to SmackDown, I would actually slightly worry for them. So for me, I think they need to stay on Monday Night Raw. Let's switch things up then, shall we, and move over to Friday Night SmackDown. And of course, the first I'm going to talk about is The Bloodline, because the whole story of The Bloodline has taken place on Friday Night SmackDown. Yes, The Bloodline have dominated the championship scene. It's brought them over to Monday Nights on occasion. You could bring that storyline over to Monday Night Raw, but I'm just a creature of habit here, guys and girls. I'm used to seeing The Bloodline on a Friday night on SmackDown on Fox, and I do think that Fox part could be a key ingredient because of course they're going to want Roman they're going to want the bloodline to stick around on their show and I think what Fox wants I think Fox will get and to be fair the bloodline I think there's still quite a bit of mileage shift in this story I think that we are on that sort of third and final act in the way and I think it could be the breakup of the bloodline look like I say to see things if they go full circle say Jey Uso leads the pack whether it's Solo that leads the pack, it could be interesting to see how it will play out. But for me, this storyline begun on SmackDown. It needs to finish on SmackDown, in my opinion. And if you don't want to break up the Bloodline in the meantime, you've got plenty of great factions, if you want, that they could be working with. Currently, there's Imperium, there's the Brawling Brutes, and there could be other ones that could be sticking around or new ones that could be coming in. And that goes on to a couple of further picks I have coming later in this video but next let's talk about none other than Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio only came over to Smackdown like last October so he's one of the sort of faces that have sort of changed brands in recent months outside of a WWE draft so why throw him back over to Monday Night Raw especially when you could have people coming to join him over on Smackdown in the draft for example a Judgment Day could come over finish the storyline there especially as Rhea Ripley is currently your Smackdown Women's Champion but at the same time when you look at Rey Mysterio he's been someone that's been you know part of Smackdown's legacy over the last couple of decades doing a lot of his best work in the noughties being back there now just kind of feels right for me it feels like he's at home and there's some great matches he could still do on Smackdown with the current crop that we've got of course he's leading the LWO as well so there's lots going on for Rey that's quite interesting quite fun and arguably fresh on Smackdown so for me personally I I'd keep Ray exactly where he is. I've also mentioned the LWO because, of course, Ray reforming that group, of course, with Legado del Fantasma. For me, Legado del Fantasma are a great group with a lot of potential. And for me, have a potential breakout start in Santos Escobar. And for me, Santos Escobar could even be the key ingredient of why I can convince you that the LWO and Ray Mysterio should stay on SmackDown. Because, well, under Ray Mysterio's guidance, Santos Escobar has the potential to develop and grow. Of course, we know experience-wise, he's done it outside of WWE. But of course, to be put over to a, let's say, WWE audience under Rey Mysterio, this is the perfect thing for him. You can even do, eventually down the line, Santos and, you know, Legado del Fantasma kicking Rey out of the group, making a fresh storyline program, having Santos Escobar beating Rey Mysterio. And of course, there, alas, you've got another brand new star on your roster so for me personally i'd like to see that and we mentioned about groups as well that can go feuding with the bloodline as well why not the lwo it feels to me personally you bring it back now yes it's a bit of nostalgia for those who remember the original group they were never really taken that seriously i think that triple h would take the lwo a lot more seriously in the modern day in wwe Next superstar I'm going to talk about is Braun Strowman. I think he should stay on SmackDown purely because, yes, he's in a tag team right now, but WWE have used him as a main eventer in the past. He can easily break out as a single start once again if they wanted to. Uh, of course, it's been many years since he's faced Roman Reigns as well, so if they wanted to redo that match, they could do that. If sort of certain superstars come over from Raw to SmackDown, I don't know if let's throw some names out, perhaps say like a Bobby Lashley, for example, you've got a program you can work with there. Braun Strowman is someone that's kind of at the moment a sleeping giant on SmackDown. He's not really being used to the potential of what they could do with him, uh, which I'll give you could say, well, that can make him work to go to Raw. But at the same time, I think it's just someone that are waiting for the right opportunity to put back in placement on SmackDown to beat a big deal once again. I do feel that if he was put over to Monday Night Raw with the amount of star power over there, 
I do think that Braun would remain shuffled in the pack, getting a bit lost, perhaps stuck forever in a tag team. So for me, I think for Braun Strowman, it could make more sense actually for him to stay on SmackDown, find the opportunity to break him away from Ricochet and start pushing him as the monster among men once again. Last superstar I'm going to talk about on SmackDown that should remain on the brand is Natalia. Now the reason for that is she is a general, a workhorse, a locker room leader for the women's division and SmackDown has a lot of, let's say, less experienced women on that roster. When you look on Raw's side, you've got Becky Lynch, that's a general over there. Bianca Belair is becoming one herself as well with the amazing run that she has been on. When you look on SmackDown, in my opinion, Natalia is that guidance, is that superstar that you know the, the women can go to in the locker room, perhaps even the men as well, because let's be fair, Natalia has been there and done it in WWE for well over 15 years. She's competed at a host of WrestleMania. She's been a women's champion multiple times. And like I say, She's a ring general. She knows what she's doing in there. If you look at some of the top stars on SmackDown, Charlotte Flair being one of them, for example, she's not there all year round. Ronda Rousey is not the most experienced in ring. In my opinion, and it's my opinion I'm saying this here, I think her 2018 run, when she was more of a novice, was stronger than her most recent run. I don't think it's been as strong, but at least right even Ronda can go to Natalia for guidance. I know that they were training together the first time before Ronda Rousey came into a WWE ring. So for me, I think Natalia, if WWE want to continue having SmackDown having, say, the more inexperienced roster, I think Natalia is a good hand to have on SmackDown. Some that the people can go to, someone that they can talk to, and someone they can get some guidance from, and someone that hopefully can put on some great matches by calling it in the ring at the time. And it's probably why she was also involved at this past WrestleMania's match, because like I say, she's someone that's been there and done it. She's a good, good head, good shoulders. She knows what she's doing. Elimination Chamber, she was involved in again this year as well. It just shows she's a great hand to have in WWE, and she could be a great hand if she stays on SmackDown. And not just that, I mean, like I say, she's good in ring as well. So you can put her in championship programs as well if you wanted to on the blue brand. But that's my opinion. Now it's time to let me know your opinion in the comments below. Who should not move in the WWE Draft 2023? Let me know your Raw and SmackDown picks in the comments below right now. Make sure to like this video, to share with a friend, and subscribe to SCW as well. And like I say, stick around. Plenty of draft videos on the way over the next few weeks. Check out the videos on the Sunday screen right now. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. You've been watching SCW here on YouTube.